Hey there, welcome to another Slightly Redneck video. Uh, time finally for the second part of my function stacking quail hutch. Finally got a prototype built. Um, I will tell you before we go do a tour of that that I built it with uh, all stuff that I had on hand, all scrap wood from a uh, from uh, uh, pallets and things like that, uh, some particle boards, so it's not really built to last a long, long time. But what I figured is um, I'm going to make a lot of mistakes building this the first time. I, I need to test it out. I've never kept quail outside, so didn't want to put a whole lot of money into it until I got it tested out a little bit, uh, make changes that I want to make to it, and then I'll go back and I'll film the building of it a little bit uh, more in detail. But we'll take a tour real quick and I'll let you know kind of some of the little things that I've found so far that I might change if I were to do it again, or when I do it again, I should say. So let me stop chattering and uh, we'll get right to it. You can see if you watched my last video um, on the plan, uh, what I've got down here is just one of those crates that uh, it's just sitting on top of that crate. That hutch isn't tied into it anywhere. It's heavy enough that it just sits right on top of there and I just built it to those dimensions there. But this is the hutch that I built right here and it's just a simple box uh, design. Um, pretty easy. I, I put a couple of, of uh, posts up there. I've got rafters that uh, just a couple of boards that run down the side to serve as rafters. And then on the top there I've got some sheet metal that was left over from a, uh, a barn that somebody had torn down and I got the sheet metal. That's the roof on the thing right there. And I did move the location. I set it back here. Um, if you watched my last video you know I was talking about a different location. But this is a shadier spot. It's got the tree cover all around it to provide some shade. And uh, it seems to be working out pretty well from that standpoint. So let's go take a closer look here and we'll see what it looks like inside. Uh, you can see I've got a five gallon bucket hanging up there in the tree with a hose coming out of it. Uh, what I've done is I've built them an automatic watering system. Pretty simple to do. Um, I might do a video on that at some point in the future too and how to put that together because um, I'll be building another one real soon and, and I'll, I'll do a video on that and show you how to do it. But pretty easy. Just stuff I picked up mostly from a... Uh, well, get a better view. Get a better view of this system here that's set up. This stuff I picked up mostly from, uh, from Lowe's. Uh, the bucket is a food grade, five gallon food grade bucket. Uh, this is just some hose that, uh, that they had there that fit um, on a three quarter inch, I think it's three quarter inch, I may have half inch PVC, I can't remember, but three half inch, whatever it is, PVC here. Uh, these connectors, uh, where you've got the water cups on the other side, you'll see them on the inside here in a minute. These came, when I bought the water cups, they came with these connectors. So you just screw the water cup in with some Teflon tape wrapped around the threads, and then you mount your PVC um, in, in there, it connects all the way through. Put a cap on the end of it, and that's really all I had to do. So this is pretty good so far. This bucket holds um, quite a bit of water. I mean, they, they've been out here for about a week and a half and haven't really even touched that. Um, and their water's doing just fine here, so. What I've done is I've just built a simple, simple door here. Um, and it's just got a couple of latches here that hold it closed. And I built up the entire size of the, uh, the hole here. So you can see um, what I've got there, and I've just got a little brace right there to keep the door from pushing all the way in. But this is pretty easy. It's all wired in. Um, we've got their feeder in here. They lay eggs in here. I've already collected eggs for the day. Um, so, you know, they, there's eight females and two males in this hutch right here. It was basically two of my breeder cages. And so far, um, it works pretty well as far as the crowding goes. I think I could probably get another four females and a male in there, and they'd be just fine. They're not fighting. They're not picking on each other. They all have plenty of room. They seem to be pretty happy. One thing I did notice is I made this door so big that when I open it up, I have to be a little bit careful because if they get spooked and they come flying, they'll jump right out of the hutch because it's so big. So um, you've got to be a little bit careful of that. I've only had one do that so far, and he was pretty easy to catch, so it wasn't a big deal. But one thing I'm thinking about doing, and let me get the camera in a little bit closer so you'll see. Okay, looking at the side here, hopefully you can make that out. You can see where the quail are all going through that little hole in the wall right there. Uh, so what I'm thinking about doing is building some kind of a uh, trap door that I can slide down over that. And when I'm working on this side of the cage, I can just kind of spook them into the other side, drop that trap door down in front of there, lock them into the other side, work in this side of the cage all I want, lift that door back up, spook them into this side, drop it back down, work on the other side of the cage all I want. It makes sense in my head whether I'm explaining it right or not, but it should so there work. There it is inside, you know, with their feeder, all the little quail running around. It's only 18 inches tall, so they can't get enough flight to, to really hurt themselves. And uh, that's about it on this side. Let me get this closed up and we'll take a look at the other side. Okay, the other side again, um, just a, a simple latch to close the door. And I gotta be a little bit careful when I open it again because uh, it's a big door. I wanna make sure they're not gonna go jumping out of it. But this is it. I mean, it's just boxed in, but it's, it's open on the bottom, open on the top. And my thought is that in the winter time, if it gets real cold, I can uh, add a board on top to give some windbreak from the top. And I can put a box in here with some straw or something in it that they can get into uh, that would provide them a windbreak underneath. But right now it's summertime and it's hot, so the extra ventilation really helps them. Some of them seem to kind of like to hang out in here. It gives them a little bit of a safe place to kind of 
kind of feel good about. And then, uh, you know, most of them hang out in the other area quite a bit. Let me close this up here. Okay, so the uh, one thing I've noticed so far, I mean, so far it's been working out pretty well. Droppings go right on the ground. It's not making a big mess, but they've only been in here about a week, week and a half so far. So it's a little early for me to be able to tell about that yet. Um, but the only thing I have noticed is that I moved them in here and immediately my egg production dropped. Um, there's eight females in there, so I should be getting about eight eggs a day. I'm only getting about five a day. I think a lot of that is due to the light. Uh, so I, I bought a, uh, you can probably see it right here, this blue screen going up here. This is a, a cheap $10 uh, rope light, solar rope light. Uh, I set that up today so we'll see if that produces enough light for them. Uh, maybe get them to start laying again uh, on regular if I have to, what I may do is uh, move the breeders back inside into more of a controlled environment, especially for the winter time, and then use this primarily as a uh, as a grow out pen for my grow outs. I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm going to work that yet, but that'll all be uh, you know I'll keep you guys updated on that in future videos. So this is pretty much it. Again, um, it's pretty cheap. I mean, this particle board, unless you paint it, it's probably not going to last very long. I didn't have any extra paint. And I didn't want to invest in it, um, but it's going to be easy enough to replace. This is all stuff is like pallet wood and came from those crates, so this stuff should last all free didn't cost me anything is the best part um, if I like this if it's working out I may come back and replace these uh, panels right here with uh, with stronger wood or uh, just paint them for that matter um, and get them to last a little bit longer and I'll be building a, another hutch probably um, a little bit bigger because um, I do want to you know increase my breeders out here and uh, I'm not sure that this is quite big enough to, like I said I think I might be able to get away with adding another uh, four females in the mail to this group but I might be pushing it on, uh, on the crowding a little bit, so I'll probably just build them a bigger hutch, and I'll film the whole process of building that, so you'll get to see step by step how I do that. Open for suggestions. Um, if you see something in here you think, hey, I could have done that a better way, let me know. I'd be happy to hear it. Other than that, don't forget, hit the subscribe button below. I guess it's probably over there, though, isn't it? Anyway, hit the subscribe button below to keep updated with my videos. Thanks for watching, and uh, as always, God bless.